Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2 and today I'll be showing you guys what I believe to be the absolute best AR build both in a solo and in a group context. This build doesn't only offer insane amounts of damage, but if set up properly can give you a ridiculous amount of survivability and sustainability, almost making you immortal. My build definitely isn't perfect and there are a good amount of things that I would like to improve on where I could easily get myself a pretty decent amount of extra damage and also make my healing much much more powerful but as you can see I'm still able to do well over 2 million DPS while having 250k armor, 30k health, and 1000 skill power and that's my damage without having any buffs such as unstoppable force and the chatterbox buff which are two things that combined together probably get me close to around doubling my damage output. I know that a lot of people don't really value having more armor and survivability all that much, but you know, I tried a glass cannon version of this build and I honestly find that running more armor and a little bit of skill power not only makes content much easier because you don't get one-shotted nearly as often and you actually have time to react, like trust me it does actually make a difference, you can actually tell while playing, but I feel like the damage is way more consistent with Unstoppable Force than the alternative being Berserk as Berserk is going to be much more circumstantial and you have to put yourself in risky situations to completely gain the benefit out of it. But with Unstoppable Force, you can have this buff up almost pretty much all of the time. Not only that, if you run a full glass cannon build, you're not going to have a heal that can get you to full HP in less than two seconds, which you know you might not think is all that valuable, but trust me, once you use it and you get to see how good it is in certain situations, it helps a ton. I'll make sure to leave some gameplay at the end of this video so you can see how good the build actually performs, but if you want to see it live in action, I stream every day on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nick2, and most likely we'll be using this build as my main build from now on, so I would appreciate it if you guys could check me out over there. I also just want to quickly mention if anybody out there needs help farming, setting up a build, or anything like that, feel free to email me at nick2biz at gmail.com and I would love to help you out. But anyways, let's get right into the build, guys. Alright, so starting off with the specialist, I'm going to be running sharpshooter. A lot of you might be wondering why I wouldn't play survivalist. I mean, you get 15% increased AR damage. And you also get 15% additional healing if I were to upgrade this all the way, which would be great because I'm going, I'm specking a little bit into making my chem launcher pretty good with this build. The reason I wouldn't want to do this is because I think Sharpshooter ends up, ends up giving you more value. The reason being is 25% increased headshot damage. That's a lot of headshot damage, but now more than ever, reload speed is really helpful, especially on ARs because you, instead of having a 60 round mag, you have a 40 round mag, which, can, which means you're going to be spending a lot of time reloading now. Additionally, if you're using the chatterbox, you also want to reload while in combat as well to get the benefit from the chatterbox rate of fire buff, which means you're going to be spending even more time reloading. Another caveat to this is that if you have the additional 20 round mag, that's going to reduce your reload speed even more if you actually have that mag. Not many people have it. It gets you like 50 bullets, but if you were to run that, that reduces your reload speed. So this talent here kind of counteracts that. Additionally, you get stability and reduced recoil, which is obviously... Always nice, but I mainly run it for the headshot damage and the reload speed. You can do survivalist if you want to, I just prefer sharpshooter honestly. So getting into the build itself, like I said before, mine is not min-max, and I'll go over every way that you can potentially make everything better. I wouldn't worry too much about like brand sets and stuff like that. The main takeaway would just be how to synergize talents well with each other, although if you are trying to min-max, individual brand sets are going to be important because certain brand sets can't get certain roles on them etc etc so i would pay attention to that if you're really trying to min max it but otherwise kind of just pay attention to the talent roles and how everything synergizes so the main component of this build is pretty much just going to be unstoppable force and then sacking a lot of armor because as i you know the more armor that i get the more damage that i'm going to be getting from unstoppable force a lot of people think that this is going to cap at 200,000 armor I tested this, that is not the case, you still get additional damage after having 200k armor, so more armor equals more damage. A lot of you might be wondering why wouldn't I just, you know, play Berserk and then go full glass cannon, reason being is because I think Unstoppable Force is much more consistent, and I really enjoy having more armor. And since I'm going 7 into Unstoppable Force, 7 defensive, this means that I'm already going to have very low red rolls, which means that I get all the weapon damage and headshot damage that I need on my pieces of gear, and I don't really need any more red rolls. So because of that, I get to go into safeguard, which gives me a ton of extra survivability, as I'm sure you guys get to, got to see in the gameplay. And that is going to pair very nicely with, you know, my chem launcher. But honestly, it's just a huge quality of life thing. The second I get low, I could just pop a chem launcher, boom, full HP. Having safeguard is amazing. Another thing that you could do on the knee pads is I like to run hard hitting just for damage, but you could always run patience. I don't have one right here, but it's just sitting in cover gives you armor. You could run that. I just don't like to sit in cover very much, especially when using an assault rifle, but 
if you like a slower play style and you want to be super safe that's pretty good obviously with a uh, rifle or ar here you can't run entrenched but yeah that's the main gist of the build you also get a lot of damage back from having the optimus talent on your gun and you can only do this with five or less so that's even more reason to only go into five here i know there's a lot of proponents of the 377 build right now while using on the ropes on the backpack Personally, I didn't really want to make that build, one, because a lot of other people are already making it, and I kind of wanted to try my own thing, and two, I don't know if I would be a fan of the playstyle, honestly. I really like having safeguard and the, I guess, safety that it provides me. It's just a ton of fun using, and I get a lot of survivability out of it, right? Well, with on the ropes, I would kind of lose that. On top of that, I think that I would end up losing a, a little bit of damage, and it would be hard to set it up perfectly with my build and i also think that on the ropes is a little bit too conditional for me to enjoy i wouldn't want to have to just be using skills mid combat in order to actually gain full damage but if you want to run on the ropes a 377 build you can definitely do that i just didn't want to do that with this build another core component of this build is that i am going to be going for skill power one thing that i noticed when setting this build up initially is that on a couple pieces of gear such as holster uh since I don't have, you know, room to get any more red rolls, there's not really anything decent that I could get here because I can't get armor, so all I would get is, like, health or cooldown reduction. So I can end up getting skill power. When I get a lot of skill power, and I could have way, way, way more than this if I actually had my build min-maxed, but when I get skill power, that allows me to put some mods on my chem launcher, which actually is going to increase the heal by a lot. If I had really good mods, I think my healing would be increased by almost 50%, especially if I had more skill power. Right now, my mods are pretty lackluster, and I definitely would like to get more, but I still notice a difference even with this little amount of mods. Somebody just followed me on Twitch, sorry about that. But yeah, I mean, going into skill power is pretty much free here, and it's really easy to do, and it's pretty much just going to make your chem launcher really good. You can also do this with uh, drone mods. I don't have any, actually, but you could do the same thing, just increasing, you know, cooldown reduction or healing or whatever on here. So first off, I'll talk about guns, and then we can get into every individual role and how everything is going to pair with each other. So starting off with the main gun here going to be going with a p416 this is kind of obvious this is going to be giving you the most damage possible i know a lot of people don't like the p416 because they complain that it doesn't have a lot of accuracy good thing for you i got you covered because with this build that we're running one dnh to araldi and since you don't have much crit you also go for accuracy on the mod and you can get even more accuracy if you wanted to so accuracy is not a problem at all and i mean you can watch the gameplay and see i'm not having any problems with that but the P416 overall is just going to give you way more damage than any other gun will. You can use the FAMAS, but honestly, I think you spend way too much time reloading with this. But yeah, in terms of talents, you definitely want to get Optimus. This is going to be the best talent, especially when you're running high rate of fire. You're pretty much just getting that extra damage all the time. It's awesome, especially towards the end of the mag. You can do upwards of 200k a headshot, which is crazy. Second talent, obviously want Allegro here. You could go something else, but Allegro is just going to be the best. Bolster talent doesn't really matter. In terms of the mods, you could go accuracy here, accuracy here. Uh, you're not going to be going for crit, obviously, because with this build, you can only get five red rolls, right? And, or five offensive attributes, whatever you want to call it. So since you're only getting five, you don't really have room for any crit. So you're pretty much just going to be ignoring that entirely. So I just went for damage to elites, but like I said, if you want accuracy, you can definitely do that. For the extended mag, just 10 bullets. You could get the 20 bullet mag, like I mentioned before, but you know I don't have that one. And... That also reduces your reload speed, so definitely want to run Sharpshooter if you do get that mag. For my second gun, pretty obvious, going to be running the Chatterbox. Blabbermouth is just way too good. You get 20% re uh, rate of fire for 10 seconds after killing somebody and reloading. It's absolutely insane, as I'm sure you can see in the gameplay. So definitely want to be running this when running any full auto gun. Moving on to individual rolls. Things get a little tricky here, so I would try to pay attention. It might be kind of hard to retain all the information, maybe get a, a pen and paper down. And like I said... Brand sets, individual brand sets can give you different roles and different role capabilities. So I would make sure to pay attention to that because some masks can't get the same roles that other masks can. And same thing with, you know, knee pad, backpack, everything. So I would pay attention to that, but that's only super important if you're trying to min-max. The mask here is actually one of the pieces that I would prefer to replace. You want to go for damage elites here because it's just a ton of damage. Uh, with my build, I actually have to go for a blue roll here. You might be wondering why wouldn't you go for skill power. I have to go for a blue so that I can get 7 uh, total defensive here. But instead of health, I'd much rather have hazard protection. You can get probably like 10% while having a really high amount of damage to elite. Has oh, that is so loud. Hazard protection is actually really nice. It's better than just 2,000 health, honestly. Um, and then hard hitting. Instead of having wyvern here, since I'm not running any crit, I'd much rather have providence just for the skill power. There isn't really any other 
set that I think is worth running because Gila, I don't think you can get a passive talent to roll on it, which is kind of unlucky. So definitely would want to go for Providence here for the skill power. And I would run this piece if I could, but like I said, this gets me to six and then I can't use Unstoppable Force anymore. I'm also missing a lot of armor because this is a two, uh, 450 mask, but just try to get damage to elites, hard hitting, and then a blue roll here. For the chest piece, you might think this is, is that this is scuffed. This is actually kind of how I want it to be. I have armor here, skill power, and weapon damage. If I didn't have the skill power here, maybe if I had like a Providence mask, I could get rid of the skill power here and instead go for headshot damage. I actually don't mind it though because this helps get me to the threshold that I need to be at. And then you want to go for weapon damage. That's going to give you more value out of anything else. Unstoppable force here, obvious. You, instead of hard hitting, you definitely could go for hardened. This would get you up to 270k-ish HP, probably like 275 or something like that. This would get you a ton of extra armor if you went for hardened, but I like to go for hard hitting. I mean, I couldn't even roll this if I wanted to. Uh, it just depends on what you want to do, I guess. And then for the mod slot here, I have a generic mod that gives me headshot damage. For the holster, I wanted to go for DNH mainly because, not the accuracy, but because on a DNH holster, you can get a utility mod slot and you can get pretty decent rolls. So I have skill power here, obviously, so that I can reach my threshold. You can get way more skill power. I've seen a holster with like 820 skill power or something like that. So you could definitely get way more and that would be obviously just way better for the build because you could get better mods. By having more skill power and then for the talent you want to go for precise you could go for devastating but you know tweets their own and then for the mod slot here i got 89 skill power this is pretty important you want to try to get a mod slot that has some base skill power but also gives you skill power for chem launcher so in total i'm getting like 300 skill power from this one mod which is really strong especially for you know being able to equip the right mods on my chem launcher and of course, it being DNA, the 5% accuracy is pretty nice. If you're trying to run an Araldi holster, all of them have offensive mod slots, and in which case you wouldn't be able to use a utility mod, so that's why I like to go for DNA. Now, for the backpack, I'm running an Araldi backpack, just for the two-piece of Araldi, which is really nice. I get the accuracy, I get the headshot damage, but going for armor here and weapon damage, this is actually probably perfect. I would much rather have a little bit more weapon damage. I think I could get up to about 8.5% weapon damage here while still having around 6,000 armor. Uh, I would do that if possible, but I'm really happy with this roll as it is because I got safeguard and hardened on here as well. You could go for hard hitting if you wanted to, but I just I, I like to have a lot of armor. I uh, could have even more. Now here is a hole in my build, I guess if you will, but it isn't even that bad because you would think you probably wouldn't want to go for an offensive mod slot, right? Because you'd probably rather get damage on like a piece of gear. But with the way that this build is set up, because I'm going for skill power on my chest instead of headshot damage on the chest, this actually isn't bad because this still is going to correlate to 4.5% weapon damage. And that's not a low amount. You could you could also get a better mod here. I have some that have like, you know, look at this. This is 4.0% SMG damage and 1.5%. And I think I have one that has like, yeah, 5% SMG damage. Like you could get a higher roll here in which case, I think best in thought you could get like, 6% AR damage and like 0.5 or 1% weapon damage. That's a lot of extra damage that you would be getting. So I definitely try to do that if possible. Now for the gloves, these are pretty obvious. Going for assault rifle damage here. I have devastating on my gloves. I personally would probably rather have precise because I like to see big numbers, but devastating obviously is really good as well, especially if you aren't hitting headshots consistently, but definitely want to get the AR damage here. I mean, 9% AR damage. That could easily be 13%, but unlucky roll. For the knee pads, you're going for Gila knee pads or Gila knee pads, pretty much just for the armor. You could go two-piece Gila if you wanted to run like a Gila backpack or... Can it go on backpack? I know it can go on mask. I don't know. I don't think it can go on backpack actually, but it's pretty good for the additional armor. And you also get two defensive mod slots on here, which is really nice. I went for headshot damage right here, and then for the system, I got armor and extra armor. I actually could have a 500 gear score one of these, which would probably give me weight more. And then for the attribute, obviously just going for armor because there wouldn't really be anything else worth running. You could also go patience here if you wanted to. But yeah, guys, that's that's pretty much it. I'll show you guys my stats real quick. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the build. It's, it's nuts, right? Uh, doing a lot of damage, got a lot of survivability. So here we go, I got a 113% headshot damage, no crit chance, no crit damage, like I said. Reload time is really fast. Decent amount of accuracy and stability. 22% AR damage bonus, almost 20% all weapon damage bonus, and 97% damage to elites. This build is probably my favorite build to run at the moment. I like running this with a rifle as well, but AR is just the most fun to me, even though I think that rifle is overall a little bit more versatile. But 
being able to just have so much survivability gives me so many opportunities within my playstyle that I don't have to, you know, worry about getting one shot at all the time. And I still do just a ton of damage. It's it's a lot of fun using this build. I definitely would recommend it. And I mean, as you can see in the gameplay, it's very, very strong. And I can't wait to see how good this build will be once I actually get it min max because I think that my chem launcher, I could get it to heal way more than it already is. And like I mentioned, there's a few pieces where I could get way more armor. I could get a little bit more weapon damage here and there. So if this were perfectly min-maxed, it would be even stronger. And I already think that it's in a really good spot. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. See ya. Your goal is a collection of transcripts and notes from months of prisoner interrogations. The information stored on the military-grade laptop kept in the main holding area downstairs. First priority is to release the prisoners to keep the true sons busy. You'll be looking for some kind of security terminal. Security terminal should be somewhere nearby. Look around. Got a man down! through.
recovered intel that's going to be a whole lot of help to Odessa in the short term, but to all of us in the long run. We also effectively put this hellhole out of control.